yeah, I'm going to switch to something that I think is really important to sellers and leadership alike. Personal growth is huge. And yeah. you and I have been really fortunate because we've had successful careers. They, they, it's, and it's funny, too, because, you know, I think anytime you look at your career and especially people that you've had the pleasure of working with, I mean, they go in such interesting directions. And if you'd asked me 10, 15 years ago where I thought my career would go, I would have been dead wrong. But, um, you know, what I think is amazing is you, you figure out what you're good at. And ideally, you can parlay that into things that, um, you know, where you can be, where you can have a unique skill set to do a job well. But I'm curious from a personal growth perspective, how do you invest in your personal growth? Are there are there books? Are there podcasts? Are there mentors? What relationships and what resources have mattered most to you, Marco, as you've kind of developed um, investments in your personal growth? Oh, that's that's great, and I, I completely agree. Personal growth is very very important. Uh, you make you're you're making yourself more valuable for the people that you lead and support, um, as well as you know the people that that lead and support you. So for me. You know, I've, I'm more of a ebook, you know, reader. Um, I love to to listen. You know, some for some reason when I sit in front of a book and actually read it, I I can't concentrate. So I love to do uh, you know different ebooks and things of that nature. But also, I love to pick people's brain. You know, I've reached out to you. I've reached out to several leaders uh, in different organizations, uh, as well as you know um, people that are not in leadership. And what I want is I try to really understand their journey. I try to understand their experiences. And I like to just listen. I want them to share with me what have they went through, what's been their hurdles, and how did they overcome those particular hurdles. Uh, I'll say definitely in my previous organization, I, I met some, some solid leaders that, that really helped me grow as a leader. And I looked at them as mentors. Uh, they've helped me from more of a I think as you're a manager, right, especially in that organization, you're you're managing more, um, you're managing more of your people, sales sales strategy, sales tactics, things of that nature. Uh, as you grow and you move up, as you said, you're you're managing more budgets, you're managing more, um, you know, high level management uh, and leading an organization, which is completely different from from really leading and driving revenue. Now you're driving strategy, um, which is, you know, can definitely be a little bit different, sometimes even your P&L. So, you know, those are things that I really had to develop and, and understand. And there were some people that definitely helped me along the way. I think transitioning from uh, my previous organization to my current organization, man, you talk about the, the growth that I went through and it's, and it's strictly from being in the room. You know, sometimes you just have a ton of growth from being in the room, a fly on the wall. You may not understand <laughs> anything that's going on, but you're there and you soak it up. And I was a sponge. So I learned a lot from our RVPs, our VPs, our C-suite, you know, because I'm in those rooms now um, and understand how an organization truly operates and how it runs. And something that, that really helped me or, or that I really had to transform previous life, it's more... This is your. This is the number. Did you hit it or didn't you? You didn't hit it. We'll see you later. Uh, and that was the organization. So you manage a little bit differently, uh, a little bit hardcore management at sometimes. I think moving into this organization, my management style had to really soften up. Plus, some of my uh, team members don't report directly up to me. You have different dotted line structures. So when you have a dotted line structure, you're, you're leading from a strategy perspective and they still report up to you, but you're not necessarily looking at their time cards, et cetera. So how do you get someone to follow you who you really have no determination over, you know, uh, their employment per se? You know, they're they're following you based on strictly your credibility, your strategy, et cetera. So I had to learn how to work well with peers. Previous life, I was the end all be all. Whatever decision that I made, that's what we went with, we ran through it, that was it. I didn't have to really get any approvals, anything. If I thought it was good and it made sense, it was gonna drive our number, Marco, go do it. Switching into a new organization, I had to get buy-in. I had to get buy-in from the local directors. I had to get buy-in from 
you know, our, our, our VPs. I had to get buy-in from our VPs. I had to get buy-in from our C-suite. I had to get buy-in from the, the agents, the core, everyone, before I could ever push any strategy or initiative forward. And that could be very, very frustrating initially, uh, but it, I think it helped my growth. It helped me understand how to really be part of a leadership team and a team in general where we're working towards the same goal. You know, it's not that you have 10 different directors and now you guys are all fighting to see who's going to be number one. That's not how this organization is. You're not competing with any one person. You're competing with other uh, companies to see who's going to be number one in that industry, but not in the, in your in your organization. So you have to work together. And that's the biggest growth that I saw in 2019 uh, where I had to take those lumps. And I think it, you know, for me, I started to implement those strategies and implement what I've learned from my peers uh, in 2020. And I think our it, it helped our organization see even more growth in that regard. So I definitely grew as a leader um, in 2019 and 2020. And I have, you know, a lot to thank from my peers and, and the people that supported me along that way because I had to grow in those areas. That is super impactful, super powerful. You know, personal growth, it's important for a variety of reasons, but I think it's it's really important because it directly correlates not only to your personal happiness, but also obviously the value that you're going to bring to everybody you touch. I mean, that's that's the unique differentiator. You know, you're you are the X factor in every equation. I mean, you're you're the one who makes this, you know, makes the relationships work. You're the one who understands the parameters of your job and how to really truly be an advocate for clients and for people that work for you and people that you work with. Um, but also you know, you've got to make sure that you satisfy all the involved parties, all the invested parties. So, you know, I've got what I call a holy sales trinity. It's the customer, the company that you work for and you. Those three things have to benefit on every transaction in every relationship you can't have one of them miss out or, or or lose out i mean that's why negotiations fall through that's why uh, deals don't get approved that's why things don't move forward is because one of those entities is not being taken care of now you were also talking about a lot of different ways to invest in personal growth and you know one thing that i recommend to folks is replace senseless scrolling I'm a victim of this too. You know, you, you step away for a second, or you're, um, you know, you're, you're you're sitting there with nothing going on at that moment. And, and what do you do, man? You open up. You're maybe scrolling through social media or whatever it is. You know, I used to be the guy. I had to be holding the book in my hands, um, and I still enjoy holding a book in my hands. But like uh, getting your your eBooks, and g instead of going straight into social, go into an eBook that you know, kind of get you thinking about things in the right way. Um, also, just having a routine and, and listing out kind of your non-negotiables. I can't function at an optimal level unless I get up before everybody else and I work out and I listen to some music or I watch something that I wouldn't be able to watch with other people around. And I have my best ideas then. And that's when I kind of make my list for the day. I'm like, okay, these are the things that I need to and or want to do today that's gonna to make today a productive day. So investing in personal growth, as in these are the things that I've got to do today, outside of all the stuff that I know I'm gonna get pulled into. I mean, there's gonna be emails, there's gonna be minutia, there's gonna be fire drills, but these are the five things that I've got to get done today. And that's what keeps you moving forward. You're talking about your 1% improvement every day. I think there's a lot of people that don't think like that. They go out, they start checking email and then they get stuck in email and they just keep replying to it all day. I mean, if you just reply to 100 emails in a day, you look that's back good. on the day. Where did you make your one percent? You didn't. And that's your day. Um, mm -hmm. I loved what you said, too. Something I've really challenged myself with this year is having conversations, you know, talk to other people, talk to other leaders, talk to people that maybe are doing things successfully that you want to do better at. And just reach out to them. Say, hey, I really admire what you're doing in this. I'd love to get 10 minutes of your time. Or just tell me what, like, what, maybe what helped you break through that barrier and be super successful at XYZ. You know, find people that are doing what you want to do and copy, yep. take it part of your arsenal, whatever it is. That's how I got to be good at sales was when I started, I was in a call center and I was on the phone and I could hear everybody around me.